This fleet equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi everyone, Jason Morgan, editor of Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Definitely different something for you today. We are in Lexington, Ohio. We are visiting Stone Ridge, manufacturers of Mir Eye camera systems. Uh, we will be hopping in the truck, getting a view of the cameras from inside the truck, taking it for a ride and seeing what we can see. So come along and take a look. The first thing you notice with the Stone Ridge Mir Eye camera monitor system is that there are no mirrors on the truck. That's because Stone Ridge has an FMCSA exemption that allows it to be installed in the place of rear view mirrors. However, it's important to back up for a minute and understand the system's availability as not every configuration is available as mirrorless. The only way to install the Mirai camera monitor system and get rid of the mirrors is to work directly with Stone Ridge on an aftermarket installation. Daimler Trucks North America offers a Mirai pre-wire option that makes aftermarket installation easier. That said, the Mir Eye system is starting to integrate with OEMs for a factory install option. The most notable right now is with the Peterbilt Model 579 Next Generation. We've seen that before. However, that system includes standard mirrors as well as the camera monitor system because truck OEMs are required by law to install mirrors at the factory. While Mirai's primary function is to improve safe truck operation by boosting visibility around the truck, removing the mirrors offers a potential fuel efficiency gain between 2% and 3% depending on the application. Availability options out of the way, Stone Ridge's Mario Gafenku is ready to show us the Mirai magic. And how long have you been a driver? I've been a driver for uh, over 20 years and I have over uh, 2.5 million safe miles. And you're going to take us for a ride right now? I will take you for a ride right now. Awesome. Uh, when the driver first starts a truck, he's going to get a message uh, that says warning must select and the trailer. Uh, with the camera monitoring system, what we do is we provide uh, what we call reference distance lines to um, help the driver uh, with a quick look on the monitor. He can very quickly uh, you know, see if there's a vehicle in or near the vehicle when he's going to change lanes, when he's going to overtake and come back into the lane. Right. So in order for that to happen is uh, we need to uh, set the end of the trailer. So this red line up here represents the end of the trailer. Right. I already set it uh, earlier today. So now all I have to do is push the button because the system remembers uh, the previous setting. But if the driver, for example, changed different size trailers, <clears throat> went from a 48 to a 53, all he would have to do is with the twist of the knob, right here, this is the controller for the mirror eye. Okay. With the twist of the knob in the center, he would move that line up or down depending on where the end of the trailer would be. Okay. So in order for that to happen, he would have to walk back there and set even a coffee cup like this. You can set it on the ground. Right. And then um, all he would have to do is rotate the knob, move the line to match that, and then oh, push the button to set it. Okay. Okay. Because you have to indicate where the end of the trailer is. Right. No. Very so, good. So, you know, pushing the button, what it does now, we can uh, we can now see the, it displays the reference distance lines. If it displays it on both sides, you might be able to see it better on that monitor. Oh, yeah, okay. So the red line represents the end of the trailer. The orange amber line represents approximately 40 feet behind the end of the trailer. And the green line represents approximately 80 feet behind the end of the trailer. Oh, wow. So as I'm driving down the road, I can very quickly see, you know, how far the cars are behind me in the lane in the lanes next to me, and if it's safe for me to do uh, to change lanes. Uh, okay, very cool. And we use the same color code system as the traffic lights, you know, green, orange, and red. That way, uh, with a quick glance, I can tell if it's safe for me or not. Right. Okay. Very cool. So up here. Uh, is the monitor for the look down camera that I explained to you that the, the OEMs have a little mirror on the side okay so we can see all the way from that cone that's right there in front of us about 15 feet in front of the truck and we can see that base of the cone right here in the monitor yep and then right up here is the uh, fender the top of the hood right here is the lug nuts of the tire yep and you can even see the tire turning yep and then uh, we got the steps right here Right here is the curvature in the fairing of the truck, which yep. is the end of the cab. And then we can see all the way back to the fence. You're right, okay. Uh, uh, two lanes of traffic. Right, right. Very cool. 
usually this monitor is faced towards the driver so the driver sees it better and it puts everything more in perspective but right now I have it turned so everybody that gets a ride gets to see what I see. No, very cool. Okay, and uh, as I said, we still provide the same uh, uh, standard view, and then at the bottom we provide the uh, wide-angle view, the convex mirror, what the convex mirror would provide to the driver. Very cool. The uh, little yellow bar at the top, that's to represent the panning. So what's going to happen when we start driving forward? The cameras outside don't move, but the image on the monitor will move to maintain the end of the trailer onto the onto the monitor, so I can see where those tra uh, trailer tires are. Right, right, right. And uh, I'll uh, show you guys that in just a second, as long as you're if you're ready to go. If you uh, pay attention to the right side monitor, there you'll see the panning, and I'm doing it slow so you kind of get uh, get the idea of what it does. So uh, as I turn. The image on the monitor is going to turn oh, yeah, okay. to maintain that trailer in view. And then as I straighten out the wheel, then it will come right back. And now, you know, it's back into the default position. Right. Okay. Very cool. What are the, what are the warnings so, down there? So those are the, uh, those are icons okay, of the uh, functions of the mirror eye system. Okay. So they stand for day, night, for camera, for monitor. They got the panning. I see. Uh, then we got uh, the uh, heating element uh, on the camera lenses. We have the power fold and the IR light that we provide for the night vision in color. Okay. Very cool. So if, if it's green, that means the function is active and everything's working properly. If it's gray, that means it's an inactive function at the time. And if it would be red, that means there would be an error. Okay, okay so right now, another great view for the uh, look down camera oh, yeah. is I don't have to get out of my seat to see where that wall is. Oh, yeah. I know exactly how far or close I am to that wall. Right. And I don't have to be worried about uh, hitting it. Right, right, very cool. Okay, so now we do have another function that's called zoom. So I have it set up on the auto zoom. So as soon as I put the truck in reverse, the top view will go to a zoomed view. We have options from 200, 250, and 300 uh, percent magnification. This one is set at 250 percent magnification. And now I can clearly see how much room there is between that cone and my trailer. And just like going forward, in reverse, the driver has the option to pan, but okay. it has to be manually done because you're going at a lower speed, so the algorithm can't really calculate lower speeds like that. Right. Or even what you, what you just want to see, depending on if there's an obstacle Correct. or where and you're trying to get in. If the driver doesn't like that view, he can always push the button on the controller, okay. and he goes right back to the normal default right. view. And you got the, the wide one below. So. Correct. The bottom view, the wide angle view, will stay the same no matter what. Okay. Fair so right. the driver still has... Uh, a wide angle view as to what's around him and he can uh, safely maneuver into any parking lot. Right, very cool. So right now, if we were to be with the regular mirror, uh, looking at the passenger side uh, on, on the right side of the truck, I would not be able to see... Uh, with the regular mirror, I would only be able to see from here to right about here. I would not be able to see anything else past that. Right, right, right. So right. with the camera itself, it provides a wider field of view just from the standard and as we get going you're gonna see it's gonna do the same thing on the on the driver's side as it just did on the passenger side so as soon as we get going and we start turning uh, it will the image will start panning to maintain that uh, trailer inside so at this point the driver with the regular mirror would have to kind of look outside the window right. to see you know where the uh, tail where the end of the trailer and the tires are to make sure you know, it's not going to hit any cars or anything, and with this, I don't even have to move out of my seat. Right. So do you notice any reduced fatigue? You've been driving it for a while now. I mean, you've mentioned a couple times here of moving around in the seat, looking over here. I mean, do you, or do you feel more relaxed? Correct. Uh, I've driven this truck cross-country a few times, and yes, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not as tired. And uh, not only me, you know, I don't drive every day like I used to, but right. uh, we've had drivers' testimonies that came back. And they said, hey, my neck pain, my back pain is almost gone now because I don't have to turn my head as much. Right. And uh, there's not as much movement. And, uh, you know, the body doesn't take a toll. Right. Because, like right now, we're making the right turn. And uh, with the regular mirror, right about at this point, all I would see is the trailer. I would right. not see anything else, uh, the tires. And with this, 
I don't even have to get out of my seat. I don't have to do nothing. I can clearly see where those tires are and where the curb is. Right. And I know I'm not going to get off the road. Right. Right. Earlier, Mario mentioned uh, one of the features on the monitor shows that the heating element is engaged or not. Right. So one of the benefits is the camera arms are heated, so there's no scraping of ice off your mirrors. There's no letting it defrost. You can basically turn the truck on, you know, wait maybe 90 seconds, let it heat up, and you're you're good to go. You have a clear crystal view. Right, right. Okay, so the system uh, is uh, has five cameras. Uh, each camera is wired independently, and each camera has its own processor. So, technically, it's five little computers running its own camera. So, right. if there would be an issue with the camera, you would not lose the whole system. You would right. lose just the one view, which would still provide the driver plenty of uh, uh, information around the truck to be able to navigate to the you know, nearest safe haven or the nearest maintenance garage where they can, right. you know, they can get it serviced. What are the, uh, I mean, it's been, it's been going for a while now and you have lots of fleets using it with lots of vehicles. What are the maintenance experiences or even considerations from your end? What, what have you seen on the road? And uh, the most things that we've seen on the road is uh, pretty much just issues with connections because the truck takes a beating. Mm. And so, um, loose wires here and there and stuff, but that's not due to any default of the installation, it's just the truck itself takes a beating. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the Freightliners nowadays, we have the pre-wire option where they put the uh, put the harness of the Mirai system directly into from the factory, so that has eliminated a lot of those issues that we, we were seeing in the, in the past. Would you roll those those connection points then into like a preventative maintenance? Every time the truck rolls in, you're checking those connections just to make sure nothing else happens on the road? Correct. Certain okay. connections, yes. Okay. Very cool. And we, you know, when we install the system, we have 24-hour, seven-day-a-week support for drivers, and we have a helpline that they can call with issues, and we can help troubleshoot kind of over-the-air uh, type scenarios, or if we feel like it's, you know, hardware that needs to be replaced. Um, right. Right, for sure. So uh, the cameras are special. The camera lenses are specially coated with the hydrophobic coating on them that repel water and dirt. The design of the housing up there, you can see it's a little triangular and it's got a little overhang over the cameras. Mm -hmm. That's designed that as the truck starts moving at five miles an hour or above, it creates the aerodynamics where it just sucks the air away from the cameras. So no road spray, no road grind will get up there to the cameras. And uh, as we have said already, the cameras are heated for uh, in the winter for freezing rain and snow. Right. And uh, the cameras are very high definition. When it rains and snows, you can actually uh, see every single raindrop and you can see every single snowflake. Right. Well, no, and even just going through there, I assume you all set this up on purpose with the construction as a demo because this worked yes. out really well. I mean, there's there's trucks on the side of the road, there's people on the side of the road, and I mean, just the visibility is impressive. Yeah, it's, actually, if you if you pay if you pay very close attention, that's how high definition the cameras are. But you can see the, how the road has actually been milled. You can see the little yep. squares on the ground. Right. So uh, yeah. Well, and you don't, like, even right here where we have that worker there, you don't lose visibility of him. You have a clear understanding of where he is in relation to you all. Correct. You and, know. and, again, the uh, look-down camera uh, helps very much uh, knowing exactly where the curb is and how close I can get and how far I need to be. Right, right. So, you know, the one thing that I'm, uh, I mean, it's impressive how much you can see. Also, you see a lot all the time. As a... From the driver point of view, was there an acclimation time to understand and process, okay, this is where I look and when I need to look? Are you, were no. you, was there any overwhelming feeling when you first started? Uh, the only overwhelming feeling that I got was that you can see a lot more than you could ever see with a uh, mirror. Right. Uh, the monitors are mounted on the eight pillar. The eight pillar is already a blind spot, so nothing we can do about that. But they're mounted in the same line of sight as the mirrors would be. Right. So the driver doesn't have to uh, be retrained on where to look. 
the muscle memory takes over and with the quick glance from left to right all I gotta do is just lift my eyes up a little bit and now I know if that side is all clear or not right. and then I just move back instead of having to move my head all the way almost to the 90 degree angle to see out the window to see you know what's next to my vehicle on that side right right so it took me about a week not necessarily to learn where to look and what I'm seeing right. but just to fully trust you know the system and right. to fully understand and uh, be able to use all the features properly right. right so but it took me about a week I mean it wasn't uh, it wasn't anything uh, hard because it's you still provide this we still provide the exact same view right it's just a little bit closer so now my head doesn't have to be my eyes doesn't have to be off the road as much as it would be you know looking in a mirror right right so we're actually technically what we're doing with this is we're keeping the driver's eyes and focus on the road ahead where just about everything happens right right so this turn up here we're going to make a right turn at the slide and this turn is going to be more than a 90 degree turn it's kind of a nasty turn uh you can even see how just about everybody uh, he has uh, gone uh, over the curb. We'll see what this truck in front of us does. He's got a shorter trailer than us, so he should be way further away from the curb than we are. But you can see how most of the trucks in here just uh, went on the gravel and went everywhere. So with us and with our system, I don't have to you know, look outside. I don't have to move out of my seat. I can still see my tires, and I know I'm far enough from the curb, and I'm not going to run it over. Right, right. Yeah, I mean the visibility there, you know, you don't have to kind of just eyeball it and Correct. Kinda, in, that you know. in that corner, what I would have to do at that point, I would have to kind of get out of my seat to kind of see what's going on. Right. That's what I would have had to uh, to do if I would have had mirrors. Right. Just to make sure that I'm not going off-road and I'm not going to hit that pole that was uh, the light pole. Right, right. So the monitors are uh, specially built with the filter in them. They don't produce any blue light like your uh, phone and tablet oh, yeah, cool. does. So that also reduces uh, the stress and the fatigue on the driver as it drives. And uh, we do provide brightness control for the monitors for both day and night. And we even have a uh, auto brightness uh, option in there. If the driver doesn't want to deal with it, you can just set the auto brightness. And that will uh, adjust the brightness of the monitors according to the ambient light inside the truck. Right, I know it's a bright day today and we talked a little bit about the night driving experience there, but uh, to kind of build off that, like how how dim do they get? I mean, you know, when you've driven a lot at night, did you feel distracted? Did you, did you feel like there were a lot of screens in your face or were you able to bring them down enough? No, you, you can bring them down far enough where it's not gonna, you're, you're not even gonna notice it. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't bother you at all. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do that. Um, and our, like I said, our night mode, our night vision is actually in color. Uh, not sure how familiar you are with night uh, night vision on cameras, but yep. usually when you flip them on night vision, it's all just black and white and gray. Right. And I'll go ahead and flip ours on right now, and you can you can, you can still see the blue and the red on the trailer. Oh yeah. So it doesn't we, even look that do, different. Yeah, yeah. Now due to the night vision special effects, the image right now during the day looks a little bit blurry because we provide the area with IR light, so that makes everything look weird in the daylight. Right. But at night, it uh, lights up everything and it helps you know be able to see all the obstacles and everything around the vehicle. Right. But the camera lenses, uh, the cameras have a filter built in, so uh, early morning, you know, late afternoon when the sun is up. Uh, or in the middle of the night when somebody comes up behind you with the uh, with the high beams. Right. Um, it does not blind you. It does not wash out the image. All it does, it puts like a halo, like a bright spot on the monitor. Right. And that's it. You can still see everything else around it. Right. So that's very important because a lot of times during those, uh, those times, especially early morning, if you're going uh, west and then, you know, in the evening, you know, if you're traveling east and yeah. the sun is in your back, it just blinds the driver. Right. And that happens to, I'm sure you've had that experience in your car too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's very, you know, a lot of people kind of understand that. I don't have to explain that too much. Right. But yeah, so all it does, it puts a bright spot and that's it. Right, right. Right. Well, and you mentioned the blue light filter too, and that is super impactful. I mean, I run that on my computer, my phone, just all time, all day, you know what I mean? And in those, in those instances, you turn it off. You don't realize how how intensive that can be if you're staring at it all the time. So reducing that is a big is a big bullet point. Yeah, and uh, 
And yes, we do have, like I said, brightness adjustments. Uh, I don't like a lot of light coming into the cab as it is, so usually my monitors are a little bit dimmer mm -hmm. than, uh, you know, but that's the beauty of it because we allow the driver to be able to control that to their preference and we're not forcing them to be stuck with something that they don't need. Right. Would you call this dimmer? Are you, do you have uh, this one set or is it right up now, now because right we're now looking at it? Is at the default 80%. Okay. It can go up a little, a little brighter. Oh, wow, okay. Even, even a little lower. Okay, so very cool. I'm just going to do a U turn over here and we're just going to get back. But I mean, even turn, yep. I can still see everything around me, make sure you know it's uh, Yep. We talked about it a little before, and you have a long driving history, but what are the, I mean, how, when you talk with drivers about it, what are those things that they're concerned about? And how do you, how do you, you know, kind of bring them into the fold and, and uh, ease any, any trepidation they might have. Yeah, so the biggest concern that the drivers have, and it started with the dash cams back in the day when companies started spying on drivers and using it to punish the driver. So anymore, if a driver, you know, a lot of drivers, they hear, you know, cameras, so they automatically think, oh, the company's gonna spy on me, and now, you know, they're gonna know what I'm doing, and now I'm in trouble. Well. Once I explain to them and I put them in the truck and I show them what the cameras actually do, they don't spy on the driver, they provide the driver with the tool to be able to see and eliminate all the blind spots next to the vehicle. Right. That way the driver can now, in the moment, make that safe decision to avoid an accident and incident and not have to deal with any paperwork. Right. Where with the dash cams, they, that would not provide them with anything. It would provide just the company with uh, liability coverage after the fact. Right. So once they understand that, you know, they kind of get the whole idea and they, they love what, you know, what you can see in it. Right. Uh, when drivers step in my truck, you know, and they get in, they look at my windows and stuff. And they're like, oh, you got bigger windows and stuff. You got, you must have a special door or something. <laughs> because that mirror is not there. there. The mirror itself, uh, we're not one, with the mirror, when you pull up at a four-way stop, it creates about 40 feet of blind spot on either side of the truck for that crossroad. So you can hide three to four cars in that space. Oh, wow. And that's, again, the driver's got to do one of those moves where he's got to look around the mirror and, uh, you know, it takes a, takes a toll on the body. And without it, you just see clearly everything around it. Right. So the first impression is, you know, the fact that they can see everything out. And then, you know, once they look at the, uh, at the mirror, at the monitors, and compared to what they're able to see in their mirror, how much more you can see, that right there just wins them over. Because, right. um, you know, a lot of people don't actually understand how much more you can see unless you actually have driven with the mirror. That's why I pointed out in the parking lot as to how much more we can see with this versus the mirror. Right, right. Well, and one of the things I feel like gets missed in these conversations is that Drivers are professional drivers. You know what you're doing, right? You want to make the right decisions. And oftentimes, if you could only just see what's actually happening around you, you could have made a different decision. Or maybe it's not your fault. Maybe I can see the behavior of the car in the lane beside me way before if it comes in front of me. You know what I mean? Correct. So driving down the interstate in the standard view, I can see two lanes over. So uh, if a car, let's say I'm in the far left lane and I want to move in the middle lane, but there's a car or a truck in the far right lane that wants to move in that middle lane. Right. Now I can see that intention and I can avoid that instead of, I'm sure you've seen it going down the road yep. where they kind of meet in the middle lane and bounce back kind of, yep. not necessarily hitting each other, but they both, you know, correct themselves. So with this being able to see it, I don't even have to worry about it because I just stay in my lane till they're done because I know what they're doing. Right, right. Yeah, I think our philosophy is, you know, really this is, driver and the fleet. So from a driver perspective, like Mario was talking about, this system allows them to see things that they couldn't before so they can make smarter, more informed, safer decisions. Um, and then from a fleet perspective, you know, we, the fleets want to make sure their drivers come home safe right. and so do the drivers. So giving them technology to make their job easier and safer, but also you know, this system helps the fleet's bottom line from a fuel efficiency perspective. Um, but also, if your drivers are making or able to make safer decisions, uh, you know, that saves on accident and collision costs, uh, all of those things that add up down the line. Right, very cool. All right, so we're gonna get some cars come up here, so pay attention to how far up they are when they disappear out of the center monitor. So the car is going to be way up there. I can see their, the back of the car, the tail, the tail lights before they actually disappear out of the monitor. Right. 
Was it, was it, is it difficult to get used to that one when you're looking straight at them now? That's no, just part like of the I, training. Like I said, you're looking straight at it, so right. it looks a little odd. Right. But when we actually, when I drive by oh, myself, you pull it's, it's, I pulled it, it's kind of turned towards me. Right. So it looks more like the side of the truck as yes. it would be. I get it. But okay. yeah, everybody gets, everybody's asking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Because, you know, you're looking right at it. But where I'm standing, if I flip it just a little bit, then it would be, it, it would be follow, almost exactly. Right there. It follows yeah. the normal uh, line of uh, line of the truck. The reason for that, putting it up there, is because as a driver, like I said, as a driver goes scanning from left to right, you're already looking in the spot. So what's the point to looking further right. when you can just put it here and still see everything? And with the good glance, I know. And most of the time, when I'm on the interstate and I'm driving, I don't even have to look at the right side. If I'm in the right lane. There's no exits coming, no entrance ramps or exits or anything. Uh, most of the time, just look at this one to make sure I'm within my lane and that's it. Like in right. a construction zone, I don't need to see what's next to me. I just look at that one to make sure I'm maintaining my lane and I'm good. For more on Stone Ridge's Mirror Eye camera monitor system, be sure to check out the link to our latest podcast with Stone Ridge below. And for even more insightful interviews, be sure to subscribe to our Fleet Equipment Unscripted newsletter, also linked below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.